As you know, it is with May being Mental Health Month here, and WCTC continues to be committed just to make our community and our state the best place it can possibly be. We've had some special guests on. We had a, a very special roundtable discussion last week on addressing mental health concerns here in the state of New Jersey. Had the privilege of hosting a business networking event last week, and this was at Jumping Brook Country Club in Neptune. And uh, ran into some good friends of mine who are involved with a really good organization that's doing some wonderful work here in New Jersey uh, called the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And my guest is with me now on the Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline just to provide an overview of what the uh, the group is all about and about some upcoming events that you will want to be a part of. Let's welcome in this morning the New Jersey Area Director, Elizabeth Rothmeyer Clemens, who's with us here on WCTC. Elizabeth, good morning. It's Burt Barron. How are you? Hi, good morning, Bert. I'm well. Thank you for having me on this morning. It's great to speak with you. And uh, our friend in common here um, is doing some great work uh, for your your organization here. And he said that, uh, you know, we've got to get you on the air to talk about the work of what this uh, foundation is all about. Uh, The history of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Uh, This it's sort of an in the moment sort of crisis management uh, group is is kind of what it is, Elizabeth, at at its core. Yeah, you know, we were established in 1987 Mm -hmm. um, on the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. We are a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by suicide a a nationwide community empowered by research, education, and advocacy to take action against this leading cause of death. And it seems like everybody that I I talk to that deals with this, and as you probably heard me say about a roundtable that we had last week, uh, it's overcoming stigma. Uh, is such a big part of this that people, Elizabeth, uh, for some reason are still afraid to pick up a phone or contact a friend and reach out for help. Uh, th- th- we have to find a way to get around that, don't we? Absolutely. And that, that's a part of AFSP's mission as well is, you know, really to create a culture that's smart about mental health. And how can we, you know, reach these communities to let others know who may be struggling that, you know, it's okay to not be okay and making them feel comfortable about reaching out for help or um, having others who may see someone struggling feel comfortable to ask their friend if, if they're okay and if, if maybe they need some help. Yeah, yeah, that that's what it's about. And, and maintaining a dialogue with people, I think, is such a critical thing. And particularly among young people, Elizabeth, uh, it's so upsetting to me when I hear that a young person, you know, struggling with addiction or, or mental illness, and they view suicide as the only way out. And they just don't realize the devastation that they leave behind. Because when something like this occurs, as tragic as it is, for the people that are left behind, they wrestle with this every single day for the rest of their lives, Elizabeth. Absolutely. You know, we know that suicide affects, you know, uh, communities. Um, It's not just, you know, immediate family and friends. It really does affect an entire community. Um, And so we we really try to do what we can to to make our impact and to let people know that there are resources out there, um, whether through AFSP or through um, other organizations like the Lifeline, um, just so that they know that they can reach out for help if they are struggling. Yeah, that's what it's about. And through your work, Liz, with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, it's fundraising, it's networking. And uh, just like the event that I was at in Monmouth County last week, I think really goes a long way in just kind of getting information out to people about what resources are there and and what are some things uh, that are available for people. And uh, the work that you and the, your fellow volunteers are doing is really just important and, and so critical. It really is. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But absolutely, you know, we have these walks that take place coming up in the fall all throughout the state. We have 15 walks that will happen this fall. And through those funds that are raised at those walks, one of the most important things that we are able to provide back to those communities are our educational programs, programs like Talk Saves Lives, More Than Sad, It's Real, um, our educational programs that are free of charge to communities. And we can come in and, you know, get them engaged and, and, and educated on the role they can play in helping to either prevent suicide or really create this culture that will be smarter about mental health. That's a lot of walking, too, and uh, with all those walks here in New Jersey. And I, I think it's such a great way to kind of get people together and have events like this, uh, which always in New Jersey always draw very well. And uh, I'm excited to learn about these. But uh, you want to just highlight a couple? Uh, we're based out of New Brunswick, Elizabeth. You have a couple that are in this immediate area that you want people to know about? 
Absolutely. We actually start off our first walk of the walk season with our big Jersey Shore walk, which will happen on September 14th, uh, starting at Bar Anticipation in Lake Como. Nice. That's our biggest walk. We see over about 1,400 walkers. Um, there's another walk that will be close to your area, which is going to be our Hazlitt Walk, taking place at the Hazlitt Pool Club, which is on Sunday, October 13th. And then the closest one to your area will actually wrap up our walk season on Sunday, November 3rd, which is our Middlesex County Walk, taking place at Thompson Park, which is located in Jamesburg. But all of the walks can be found at um, a website, ASSP.org slash NJWalk. Awesome. And so no matter where you're listening to us uh, today, uh, whether you're listening online, on the smartphone, the mobile device, maybe you have us uh, on Alexa or whatever, anywhere in New Jersey where you can be a part of these uh, events, uh, set aside a little bit of time and, and come on out and support this great organization with these walks that are coming up. And with uh, with all those scheduled, that there's really one that's happening somewhere in the state that's close to you. So if there's any way at all you can help out this really great group of people, uh, please do so. Uh, as we wrap up, Elizabeth, uh, you, do you want to share the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline because that's an important number for people to have available. Do you have that handy? You could share it with us? Absolutely. So the the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which I'd like to mention, is is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is 1-800-273-8255. And there's also a uh, text line. If you don't feel comfortable calling and feel more comfortable texting, is that number is you would text 741741. You text the word talk uh, to that number, right? That's how the texting thing works? Just note 741741. Gotcha. With the message. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Elizabeth Rothmeyer Clemens, uh, thank you for your time here today. And uh, great meeting you. And uh, through our, our, our friend Manolo, it was great to make this connection here today. And I'm sure I will see you at uh, at some of the walks uh, across the state coming up. It's it's really my privilege to, to kind of get the word out about your organization. So thank you so much for the time today. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and for helping us create a culture that's smart about their mental health. We appreciate it.